Heavenly Father, we thank you for the workers' retreat. We're beginning tonight. We're praying, O oh Lord, that you will speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that you grant journey mercies to those who are still coming on the way. And we pray that all of us, in unity of faith, will fellowship together around the word of the Lord. Bless us, O oh Lord, through all things that are said, all things that are done, so that all the glory will be given to you and will grow in our spiritual lives and be able to do and be what you want us to do and be. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I welcome you to this workers' retreat in Jesus' name. Amen. It's wonderful to be together again so that we can share fellowship together and so that we can stir up one another in the work of the Lord, in the things of the Lord. Tonight, I'm talking to you on not my will. I'm sure you know, as a Bible reader and a Bible believer, you know that those were the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Verses 41 and 42. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be with us, probably everybody is a preacher here. At least some of us preach in the house fellowship. Zona leaders, you preach. Coordinators, you preach. If there is anything that makes us people that are servants of the Lord, it is to have the mind of Christ. And in having the mind of Christ, we will pray the same prayer. We will have the same attitude. We will come to the Lord in the same mind, saying, Not my will, but thine be done. As we come to this workers' retreat, this is the one thing I want to emphasize unto you. Not my will, thine be done. I'm assuming that those of us who are here are already born again. I'm assuming that already you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you have the witness or the testimony within you that your sins are forgiven. You have faith in the Lord. You have been brought into the kingdom of God and you are a child of God. But remember, you wouldn't have become a child of God if one way or the other you didn't express, Lord, not my will, thine be done. That is, it's not on my condition. It's not in my own term. It's not the way I want. And it is not the commandment I want to keep, that I will keep. And those I don't want to keep, I will not keep. Before you were saved at all, you said, O oh Lord, not my will, not my way, not my mind. Whatever you will, that is what I want. And God said, I will that you repent. My commandment, my will for you is that you will repent. Obviously, nobody likes to repent ordinarily. Because the sinner enjoys the sin he had been committing. But because not my will, if I'm going to be saved, if I'm ever going to get to the kingdom of God, my will must be broken. My mind must be broken. And I must stretch myself upon the altar and say, O oh Lord, not my will. Thine be done. That is what you will discover in everyone that ever knew the Lord. Everyone that ever had fellowship or friendship with the Lord. Think about Abraham. Abraham, bring your only son. Sacrifice him to me in a mountain which I will show you. If Abraham had not decided, not my will, thine be done. He will never do that. Never. And when God called upon Moses and he said, get out of this wilderness. I'm sending you to the people of Israel. You will deliver them. Of course, you know that he rebelled against that originally. He couldn't do it. He was a stammerer. He wasn't a wise enough. He didn't have the ability to do that. Eventually, he surrendered because not my will thine be done. When it was the possi possible thing for him to even be 
a prime minister over Egypt, and he would have been called a son to Pharaoh's daughter. But he said, I'd rather suffer. Now, nobody likes to suffer. Nobody likes to be deprived. But it must be that he came to the position whereby he said, Not my will, thine be done. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah, saying, Get out of that place and go to the brook Cherith, because over there a, a, a raven will feed you there. Now, nobody will do that. Nobody likes to be alone, separated, segregated, isolated in a bush somewhere where some river, where a river is flowing, drink out of it and get a food morning and evening from the raven and not have anything in the cupboard, not have anything in the kitchen, not even have anything he can say that is my savings. It must be that that man came to the position, not my will, thine be done. And that is what you will discover throughout all the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. If you ever walk with the Lord, if you ever take any step in fellowship with the Lord, it has to be this, not my will, thine be done. And as we look at this, we need to understand it's not everybody that is in this condition of heart or condition of mind. There are people that are saying, I must have it my own way. It must be said the way I want. Otherwise, I'm not going to accept what they're saying. They must preach it in the way I like. Otherwise, I'm not going to agree with what they're preaching. And it must be my beloved favorite preacher that preaches it. Otherwise, I'm not going to listen. You see, those people, their hearts are not broken. And as we come to this workers' retreat, what I want you to have centrally in your heart is saying oh lord as a human being i may have things that are convenient for me and things that are not convenient for me as a human being the thing i readily choose is what's convenient for me but lord in this workers retreat not my will thine be done you know as a human being maybe you like to sleep at 10 o'clock Especially after a long journey like this, for those of us from the north, even for those of us from some parts of your state and Quara state, it could still be a far distance to get in here. Now, it's not in agreement with the flesh. It's not convenient for the flesh to still sit down. What the flesh wants is that after such a long journey, the moment you get here, there are people that will serve waiting for you. And the people that will bring water out of the fridge. And the people that will put napkin on the table and say, here you are, brother. Here you are, sister. We know your, your distance is very long. That's what the flesh likes. But you know, it wasn't like that. What are we going to do? Not my will. Thine be done. And you know that as we're here now, some of us are hungry. And some of us are tired. Some of us are weak. Some of us might be fainting already. And what the flesh would like now is for they to just release us. Give us this evening free. So that we can go to the gate over there. At least we have some naira in our pocket. We refuse to register. You see what the human mind wants is don't register. Don't pay any amount for registration. Whatever money you have, take it to the gate. Buy whatever you want. That's what the flesh wants but not my will. And not my will will mean that, well, although human mind does not like to do this, the flesh does not like to do this, the money I have, I go to register. And then all those people at the gate that are selling and all that will say, well, if everybody is going there, there will be confusion. I will sit here. While you are sitting there, your stomach is telling you, rise up. You say, not my will. And while, they, while you're sitting there, your throat is telling you, you mean that you won't give me Fanta now, or Maltex, or something? Not my will. And while you're sitting here, after all that journey, don't you feel dirty? Don't you feel that you have sweated a lot? Don't you need to come under some cold shower right now? Your mind will tell you, what you need is to rise up now and look for shower somewhere. And if the water is outside and there is none inside, all that about, um, the bathroom is filled up, 
now undress yourself because you know body needs um, cold water and just stay under the cold water not my will you can't do what you want if you're going to be a successful christian a real bible believer it is not what i want and also you know as you look at the program it appears that uh, no breathing space message bible study seminar teaching evening message night message they they almost even make everything up to midnight and uh, your body will tell you will you will you participate in all those programs look at everything how many messages can you listen to conveniently a day your mind will say only two one in the morning when you are fresh and then maybe you go to the town they've been talking about Tinumbo square where do they call Tinumbo square show me the way that's what your body wants they have been talking about Ikoyi, Ido Market, and all those places. Where do they call all these places? Your body likes sightseeing. But to say, not my will. They say now we're going to have seminar during the day. <laughs> seminar, thank God it's not a combined meeting. This is time for me to go to hostel. And I hope nobody comes to, you know, wake us up. And then you go to the hostel. And while you are lying down there, as somebody comes, and it's not from your seat, you don't even know him, whether it's a state overseer, or a district pastor, or a zonal leader, or coordinator, you say, everybody get out, you look at his face, you say, this one, if it is fighting, I can, I can defeat him. I will lie down where I'm lying down, and I will see what he's going to do. And, uh, you know, he makes all the announcements, everybody get out, everybody, and he gets to you, and he says, uh, Brother, what are, you, what are you doing there? Seminar is going on. Go out now. Your mind, you know, the natural mind, would like to look at him with a particular facial appearance that will tell him, please, if you don't want trouble, out. But you remember, not my will. And it can't be your will. You see, we get into trouble in the Christian life when you want to do your own will. But if you will remember all the time we are here and all the time you will even live as a Christian on the face of the earth, not my will, thine be done. Maybe we're distributing food and you find some, you know, older women or old men or some of the younger ladies. Uh, they say, well, uh, please, bro, let me take before you. They, I don't know how my stomach is doing. How about I don't have stomach? You want to take before? Suppose it finishes before it gets to my tongue. Please, uh, I will take my own. It's a survival of the fittest. Therefore, you use force. That's what natural mind would like to do. But then you remember, not my will. If we're going to live the Christian life and live it successfully, in every situation you find yourself, it is not my will. It may be that they tell us now, go and sleep. These people don't understand the announcement they are making. Go and sleep. All the mats, they have distributed everything. All the spaces, the people have taken for themselves and their friends. Go and sleep. And then you get in there to the hostel. You say, where am I going to sleep now? And every place is uh, filled up. And uh, there's somebody there that, you know, stretches himself here, stretches himself here. Say, ah, please uh, whenever i sleep i like to roll here and roll there the other brother said but i don't have any place uh, from which state are you i'm from kaduna good luck to you i'm from benway so go and find where you're going to sleep but you remember not my will in my will i like six feet wide but not my will i may only be given two feet and you remember as we're here at this workers retreat Nobody is here to fight for his own will, to fight for his own convenience, or to do whatever. Now, another thing is that most of us here, probably everybody is a preacher here. At least some of us preach in the house fellowship. Zonal leaders, you preach. Coordinators, you preach. And all the other pastors, you preach. But then somebody comes in here, and you look at the topic, and as a champion preacher yourself, or it may be that you go to a particular seminar, a seminar of your interest. As a champion preacher yourself, you know what to preach. You say that message, that topic there, if I were to handle it, this is how I will handle it. 
And then it may be that a preacher comes up here and the way he begins, the way he introduces the subject, is not the way you would have introduced the subject. You say, why did they put this fellow there? My brother, not your will. If it had been your will, we will not put him there. If it had been my will, maybe you will not put him there. But not my will, thine be done. You see, in your Christian life, before the Lord can deal with you as a child, as a beloved person, your will must be totally crucified. And you know, it may be that what, what is being preached, normally by the grace of God, none of our preachers will preach anything wrong here. Either on the central pulpit or at the seminar or at the Bible study. Nobody will teach you anything that is against or contrary to the Bible here in our meeting. If they do, it's because they didn't uh, understand fully. It will be an oversight. I don't think anybody will deliberately want to say, I know what the Bible says, but I'm not going to preach it. I don't think there's anybody like that here. If they make any mistake, it is because of oversight. And when we point it out to them, oh, they will say, I am sorry. They will easily correct it. But you see, they may not say it the way you want. They may not read all the references that you want. They may not put the structure that you want. But you say, Lord, it doesn't matter. I just want to hear the word of God. And I want to benefit from this workers' retreat. Not my will, thine be done. You know, sometimes you're expecting message on this area and this area and that area. Maybe message on how to possess your possession. Who knows? Maybe message on how to get healed instantaneously and miraculously. Who knows? Maybe how to get this and how to get that. Maybe how to develop your faith. Maybe that is the message you are looking for. But as you look at the program, you say, where is my message here? The one that I really came for. Because I traveled all the way from the north so that I can get a particular message. As you look at it, and the topic that is your favorite may not be on the program. Oh, you say, Lord, not my way. Whatever you have prepared for me, whatever you have for me, that is what I will take. Brothers and sisters, if you are like that, God will bless you. God will supply all your need. But let me show you. There are some people with unbroken will. Their will has not been broken. And therefore they do not have the attitude, not my will, but thine be done. I am showing you these examples, not that you will copy them. You will not copy them. In your own case, your will is the will of God. The will of God will swallow up your will. And you will say, every moment that we spend together here, O oh Lord, not my will, thine be done. And you know, there is no danger for anybody who will say that. It may appear that if you say that, what if this happens? What if this happens? God is able to take care of everything. Once you have the mind, O oh Lord, not my will, thine be done. Look at Jeremiah chapter 36. Jeremiah chapter 36 from verse 20. And they went into the king into the court, but they laid up the roll in the chamber of Eliashama, Eliashama, the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudai to fetch the roll. And he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. And Je Jehudai read it in the ears of the king. And the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month. And there was a fire in the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass, when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, he cut it with a penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the earth, until all the roll 
was consumed in the fire that was on the earth. You see that? There was a king. The Lord had sent Jeremiah to speak the word to the nation and also to the king. But it wasn't the kind of word or the kind of message that the king wanted. And he couldn't wait till the end of the message. After they had read three or four leaves, he took it out of the person reading the message to him. And he had a pen knife. And he just tore everything into pieces. And then he threw them into the fire. Do you know there are people that do like that today? When somebody has been hearing the word of God, it comes to a point, he says, I don't want to hear the rest of that. And therefore, I will not come to this church anymore. I cannot stomach all that they are preaching. I cannot stomach that kind of interpretation. I cannot stomach any message that will curtail my freedom. I cannot, I cannot contain or stand any message that will hedge me in. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't sit down there. Don't stand up there. Don't talk. No, 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 no. I don't want that. I cannot take any more. And after three or four leaves of the message, they cut everything to pieces and throw it into the fire in their mind. They don't want to come again. Do you know there are workers that do that? As you are preaching the word of God, maybe we mention something, or maybe a preacher mentions something. Ah, so the preacher is using me as an illustration. He may not know you. He may not even know that you are there. But the Spirit of God put it in his mouth. And he gave the illustration. Hey, I'm sure it's not the Spirit of God that put it in his mouth. He was after me. That's what the king felt. Because Jeremiah was saying that judgment was coming on the people. And that they should surrender to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. That if they didn't, that they will suffer terribly. The king said... You think I like that message? You think that is the kind of message I want at this particular time? At this time of trouble, we like somebody to come and comfort us. He threw it into the fire. He, he wasn't ready to say, not my will. You'll hear some things on the pulpit here during these two days or three days. If you do not have a broken will, you are likely to throw everything away. You're likely to go back to the hostel, and you're likely to tear the preacher into pieces. And you're likely to say, I don't like that. I don't like that they gave that person that message. I don't appreciate what they're saying. I think they're just using people to preach. I think they're just after some people. You see, if you're like that, you don't have a broken will, a broken spirit. But if you say, oh Lord, not my will, but thine be done. That is the attitude of a person that can get the best from the Lord. Zechariah, Zechariah, chapter, chapter 7, from verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy, and compassion, every man to his neighbor, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, nor the stranger, nor the poor, nor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart, but he refuse to hack him, pulled away the shoulder, stopped their ears, that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. You see these people here, they didn't have broken will. Not my will, but thine be done. I've read all this to you to show you that this will not be the right attitude. Our attitude all through this workers' retreat should be not my will, but thine be done. In the hostels, not my will, 
thine be done. When food is being distributed, this one will not be sufficient for me. In my house, I normally take uh, five times this size, but I'm not in my house now, Lord, not my will. Thine be done. And when somebody is giving a message here, he makes illustration, he gives example, he reads some Bible passages, he touches on a sensitive area of your life. The devil would like to say, get angry. Refuse what they are saying. Don't listen to them. Stop your ears from what they are saying. Lord, not my will. Not my will. Thine be done. They put somebody there to lead seminar or to preach over here. And the very first thing the devil will tell you, because God will never tell you. God will never tell you, you are better than that person. God will never contradict his word. His word says that in honor, you prefer the other person. The Bible says, you do not think yourself above who you really are. Therefore, when somebody comes up here to preach, or goes over there to preach at a seminar, the Spirit of God will never tell you, do you know you are better than that person? If that comes to your mind, it's the devil. And so when somebody comes to preach, or you listen to him, you may make grammatical mistake. It's not the grammar. It's the Spirit of God we're after, and the word of the Lord. The devil will say, you are better than that person. Oh, you say, not my will. Get thee behind me, Satan. The will of the Lord be done. Maybe when you are feeling sleepy, they say, all the coordinators and zona leaders come over here. Uh, we need to clean up uh, this and that. And you say, <laughs> I happen to be a zona leader, but I don't think I will honor that announcement. Then you remember, not my will, but thine be done. All the sisters from uh, Quara State, you will go to the kitchen, you will bring all the food now. And uh, my legs are so weak and paining me that if I get up now, I may fall down by the way. Then you remember, not my will, but thine be done. And uh, we'll say, shall we rise up so we can sing? Uh, and then your mind tells you, I don't think I can stand up to sing. If I try to stand up, I will fall down. Then you remember, not my will, but thine be done. We're being in the hostels, and uh, you are trying to find water to drink, or you are trying to find uh, something to, you know, something that will ease you up and make you very convenient. Or maybe your uh, child has spoiled your dress, and you want to change, although you have cleaned it up, but you want to look nice. And then they say, everybody now, wherever you are, leave what you are doing and come over here. The message is starting now. I don't think I can go there now. Look at my dress. If people see me, they will not know I'm a dignified woman. Then you remember not my will, but thine be done. All through the time we're here, I want you to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your will be broken. Let your will be submissive. In what you say, in what you do, how you act or react, everything we're doing, all that will be expected to participate in while we're here. Remember, brothers and sisters, it is a self-willed person that causes trouble, that brings confusion. But the broken person, the submissive person will never cause trouble. Not my will, thine be done. I promised you I wasn't going to keep you too long. So let's rise up. Rise up on your feet. And you pray and tell the Lord, O oh Lord, this workers retreat, I will get what the Lord has for me. Not my will. Not my will. Not my will. But thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done.
in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray Amen Our Father we thank you for what you have spoken to us tonight the timely message for the beginning of this great program we thank you for the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who submitted his will at the most trying period of his life and he said not his will but thine be done Lord we come here tonight to bow before you we say that in every area of our lives, from now on through the days of our lives, not our will, but that will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Not only in this place, but anywhere we find ourselves. Our God, we are asking that never will it be our will, but that will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. As we hear your word, not our will, your own will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are giving instructions, not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are led and controlled, not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. In serving you with all our hearts, not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. In planning our lives, planning our careers, not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. In our marriages and in our family lives. Not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, every time, all through our stay here, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the hostel, everywhere, not our will, but your will be done in the name of Jesus. Father, we are just asking that you will touch our will. You will touch our lives. Anywhere we are still having any unbroken will, stubborn will, rebellious wills, we ask that tonight you will crush them in the name of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, by your power, touch our wills in Jesus' name. Touch our wills in the name of Jesus Christ. That from today onwards, whatsoever the suffering, whatsoever the difficulty, just like we see in the life of Moses, we'll be willing to submit and to surrender totally to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, let this mark a new beginning in our lives. Let this mark a new beginning in our ministries. Whenever the tempter will come, let it be not our will, but your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, as we want to really seek your face, look for you all through this period. We are asking that whenever our flesh wants to speak, whenever the natural man wants to come up, we are asking that we will always remind our flesh, our mind, not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking that we baptize us with your very will in Jesus' name. That now, all through the days of our lives, not our will, but thy will be done. Thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name.